Hey everybody, my name is Lisa and I'm the Crafty Goddess. Hello and welcome. I suppose you're wondering why I have a plate full of beading supplies in front of me. Today's tutorial is going to be how to make stitch markers. And I'm going to teach you how to make them uh, where it won't break your bank account. They're going to be super easy and a whole lot of fun. If you make jewelry or do any sort of beading, uh, any sort of endeavors like that, you will probably have a few extra beads kicking around. Sorry, I just got to adjust this. I just spent the past 15 minutes trying to adjust everything and it was... Anyway, anyway, those of you who do this at home with rudimentary equipment, you know my pain. Um, yeah, so uh, over the years, I've accumulated quite a supply of, sorry, of um, beading supplies, jewelry supplies, whatnot, uh, as well as yarn. But we won't go into that, as you can see. <laughs> so what I've done is I've gathered a few samples of what I have that I think can help you make some cute, quick, cheap, and easy stitch markers if you're knitting in the round or if you need some way to keep track of your stitches or to keep track of where your rounds begin and end these will be perfect uh, what you're going to need are some jump rings like so uh, you're going to need a couple different sizes you're going to need a size that will accommodate the size of your needles uh, what prompted this was i was making a chunky knit or i wanted to make a chunky knit cowl that required size nine millimeter circular needles. And I realized that the stitch markers that I already have, um, there are some that I made that was a completely different method. I'll have to do that another time. I only made them up to size eight and I needed ones to fit a size nine. So peril ensued until I realized, wait a second, I have some jump rings. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. And, um, I don't really use them for anything else. I wonder if they would be good for accommodating stitches or like different size needles. Um, most packages of jump rings that you find in craft stores will indicate their measurement up to size nine millimeter, whatever. Uh, and if not, there are ways you can make your own. I don't, but I know people who make chain mail and they make their own um, jump rings, uh, nickel aluminum, titanium you name it and I'm sure you can find plenty online <laughs> see I, I do the renaissance and um, medieval fair circuits in and around southwestern Ontario at least I did until this pandemic showed up uh, and along the way I have met and made a lot of friends who make different stuff like this so uh, I'm learning the tricks of the trade a little bit here and there but it's going to be a long way off before I make my own chain mail now that being said you're going to need jump rings. Um, you're going to need some charms. And if you want to do something like this, where you use um, a straight pin and just thread a bunch of beads on it and make something that looks really cute and dangly like this. Uh, as I said, if you make your own jewelry or do stuff with beading, uh, I've accumulated some odds and ends along the way. So hence the odd looking uh, small dinner plate. <laughs> So the first thing you're going to do, if you're going to, if you want to make something simple like this, where it's just a cute little dangle, um, my first foray into making larger stitch markers to accommodate size nine millimeter needles, I used a toggle clasp. Well, the, the hoop itself, the toggle, I don't know what I'm going to do with yet. We'll figure it out. But I found out that these accommodate up to size nine millimeter needles, um, either circular or straight. And I was pretty happy with it. Plus it's already got the little hoop at the bottom. So I don't have to worry about that. So you're going to take your smaller jump ring. It's best to have smaller jump rings to attach the charms because you don't want something too big or whatever. And also with jump rings, make sure that they have smooth edges and they don't toggle too much or they're not too difficult to work with if there's any sort of rough surface it's going to pull on your, your knitting it's going to pull on your material and it's going to drive you bonkers trust me i've been through this a few times when you're opening the jump ring you want to pull it open like this where you push one hand one way and one hand the other most people use two uh, 
pairs of pliers. I've got a pair of just regular utility pliers and some needle nose pliers in case I need backup, but I'm going to try and do it with one hand just in case. And you're going to go like this. So you push that side one way, this side the other way. You don't want to pull it open, like how you just pop it open, whatever. If you do that, your jump ring will automatically lose its shape and you will never get it back no matter how hard you try. I've tried it. I've done it. Whatever mistakes have been made with jump rings, I have made them. So I'm telling you so you don't. <laughs> then you're going to take your charm and the cute little fish skeleton. I think I got this because I was going to make something cat themed. You're going to string that on there like so. Then you're going to take your toggle clasp with the hoop string that on as well and then you're going to close it by pushing the two ends together like so i also just kind of squeeze them together like this to make sure that it is closed it's best that they're not open it's best that they're lined up you want to make sure that they are lined up and that it's completely closed because like i said you could snag your knitting or you could lose your charm if you're not careful and that is that ta-da cute but what if I have a jump ring and it doesn't already have the little hoopy bit and, and I can't cheat like that. And what do I do? See, I do this just because I like a little extra dangle with my uh, stitch markers. I like a little extra bling, if you want to say it like that. <laughs> um, now, most charms will come with the little extra hoop on them. Uh, most of them face flat to the piece. Some of them face the other way. Whichever. So you're going to take your jump ring again, you're going to open it as we did the other way. We push one side, one way, one side, the other, make sure that that's done. Slide that charm in there like so. You're going to take your other jump ring, push that on there as well. If I can, sorry, just kind of, and then you're going to close it up. Like I said, I try to give it just a little bit of, make sure it's closed. There you go. By the way, in case you're wondering, hey, where can I buy jump rings? Where can I buy charms? Where can I do this? Um, I know here in the province of Ontario, we are under a province-wide uh, stay-at-home order. Actually, I think the northern half of Ontario has been reopened, but the southern half, I'm in the southwestern area of Ontario, and we're under stay-at-home order until i'm gonna say the end of the month possibly longer we don't know yet um basically stay at home means uh you only venture out for essential services only like if you're an essential worker or if you need groceries no socializing whatever it seems a little bit drastic um but i mean our numbers are going through the roof right now so uh, unfortunately, most craft stores, actually craft stores in Ontario are closed. Yarn stores are closed. They are doing curbside pickups. I believe some of them do even offer delivery. For those who live here in the province or are in a place where they are experiencing lockdown measures, I will put some websites up of various stores like Lens Mill, um, Michaels, etc. cetera. Uh, the Michaels store here in Guelph, like I said, they do curbside pickup. My sister, who is having way too much fun learning the fine art of crochet did a curbside pickup and <laughs> she said it was easy it was fun it was contactless and she's got herself a new stack of yarn so there you go now the other stitch marker like i said i uh, i'm gonna try this to the best of my ability <laughs> because my wire wrapping skills suck i tried to do one earlier it's a little sketchy um but I also haven't done this in a long time. I haven't made jewelry in a long time. I, I like to do the wire wrapping thing where you make the loop and then whatever. Um, most people will make the loop and then just cut it with a pair of wire cutters and try and shape it in that way. I try to at least wrap the rest of the wire. Um, obviously, I did a crappy job with this one. But I don't feel any rough edges and it's going to make my knitting look kind of fun. Um, these are called head pins. You can get head pins, you can get eye pins, you can get whatever type of pins you like. Um, but if you're threading beads on them, make sure that the bottom is flat and won't let the beads slip off. Um, if you find that they are, you may need to get some like crimp beads or like a little metallic bead or something at the bottom to keep them from sliding off. I think this should be okay. 
let's let's experiment let's see what happens um as i said it's been a while since i've done these um and and again as i said also you may have quite the collection of odds and ends for beads i have a little retainer like this <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything in it um not quite sure what prompted the collection but we'll go with it um and making stitch markers like this is actually really cool because it helps you get rid of some of the excess that you've had kicking around just gonna do that and maybe one of these yeah, it's it's not perfect. Part of the charm is, you know, having it look a certain way. Uh, now, I'm going to try and wire wrap to the best of my ability. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, my friend Catherine, she has an online business called Elan and Ivy. She passed along the secret to me to teach me how to do wire wrapping. She said I'm good at it. I think I suck. Um, but she said, well, you take the eye pin... You fold the wire at a 45 degree angle, like so. Then you bring this up like so. Bring the wire over. This is where it gets fun. By the way, I'm not entirely sure of what I'm doing, but this is where I get an extra pair of pliers and start wrapping. Um, I will also flip this around so I can, you can also, most people I know just, like I said, they cut it and then they smooth around the edges, whatever. I'm going to try and do this because why not? Ah! Catherine, if you're watching this, how am I doing? <laughs> Comment down below. How bad is this? Actually, this isn't too bad. Uh, another wonderful thing about having the extra pair of pliers is that it can help smooth things into place and ah if things go flying i apologize in advance you want to now if you're going to do the method like this where you take the eye pin and you wrap it around like so you're going to want to try and smooth that bit of metal if you don't cut it you're going to want to try and curl it around your work as much as possible because if you don't, again, you're going to snag and you're going to pull and you're going to cry and it's going to suck. Uh, then you might be like me where you're doing whiskey shots and questioning your life choices. Hmm, not bad. There are also online tutorials like crazy on how to do wire wrapping to... Uh, Sorry, I'm just going to do this a little bit closer to home because I need, I, <laughs> I need bifocals. Um, yeah, there are several online tutorials on how to do proper wire wrapping, whatnot. But I mean, again, this is kind of cute. And my camera's slipping again. I just noticed that now. Ah, sorry. Tighten that up. Nobody needs to see my fluffy pajamas because you got to be comfy. I just realized I didn't have any jump rings kicking around, so, or large ones anyway to accommodate this. Pull it open like so. Thread your brand new eclectic looking pin. Bam. There you go. It's not entirely straight. It's not entirely... <laughs> It's not exactly pleasant to look at, but you know what? It is kind of kitschy and it is kind of cute. Put those away for now. Um, yeah, and there is another method of uh, stitch markers that I've done. Um, the ones that I am sending off to Gail, which <laughs> I meant to do it a lot sooner this week. Uh, my apologies. <laughs> Life happens. Oh, it's over there. Okay, never mind. I will have to do that at a later date, but I thought I would show you folks the basics on what I do and why, but that's it. That's it for now. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, <laughs> I hope I explained it as best as I could. If anybody has any questions or comments, please drop them below in the comment section. If you like this video, 
please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate the positive feedback. Um, and if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button down here. There's a little box here with the word subscribe in it. Please hit that up. Uh, hit the notification bell. It'll let you know when other videos come up. And yeah, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate the time that we spent together as usual. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I, I just wish that I had a more regular uploading schedule <laughs> and less shaky equipment. I am working on that. I promise. But thank you again. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you subscribing. I appreciate all the comments and all the love. Um, please take care, stay safe, and let's do this again sometime. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.